What's going on everybody? Today I am bringing you my Skidoo versus Polaris comparison video. If you're new here, my sleds that I've been riding all year are a 2023 Skidoo Free Ride 850 Turbo 154 3 inch and a 2023 RMK Chaos Boost 850 155 3 inch. I think the most asked question I got this year when I met someone new or someone I haven't seen in a while was what do you prefer, the Skidoo or the Polaris? And honestly, they're both really great sleds and I love them both. We might be leaning a little more towards the Polaris this year, but honestly, great sleds. If you're looking to get into the sport and you can't decide between a Skidoo or a Polaris, you're really not gonna be disappointed with either sled because either sled's way more snowmobile than you need. So I wanna talk about some of the riding characteristics of each snowmobile. I don't wanna to go too far into detail because I wanna make this a shorter video. I can stand here and talk for an hour about all the differences between the two. First, we'll talk about the type of riding you're doing and where I prefer each snowmobile. Say, you know, you're a mountain rider, you're looking at mountain snowmobiles here. So you're dreaming for that big, deep pow day. And on those days, I prefer the Skidoo. A little bit to do with that is because I find I get a little bit more bog on the players. Let's be real, if you're riding in handlebar deep snow, which is the kind of snow I'm talking about, any snowmobile is gonna be bogging out because just like when you get a mouth full of snow and you can't breathe, same thing for the snowmobiles. But then if we're talking about low snow conditions, definitely prefer the Polaris. It holds the side hill better. That's you know kind of just a fact, everybody knows that. And it feels a little bit lighter than the Skidoo. When you're doing downhill descents, say through the trees or even in an open meadow, anything downhill, gonna prefer the Skidoo with the handlebars being farther forward and being able to put your knees against a side panel and not be like right up against the bar. It's just far more comfortable when you're going downhill. Then if you're going uphill, I wouldn't really say one snowmobile shines over the other. Both They're both pretty, pretty equal. Maybe an RMK would be better than the Skidoo, but uh, we're talking a chaos here, so they're, they're pretty similar. Then let's say you're jumping. I haven't spent much time in the air on the Skidoo this year. More been jumping the Polaris. That's just the way it's ended up. I haven't planned that, but I find the Polaris feels really uh, responsive to rider input while you're in the air. Throttle and brake, and you know you can really pitch the sled one way or the other. So I do like the Polaris feel there, but like I said, I haven't really jumped the Skidoo much this year, so not much of a comparison there. Something else to mention is your trail ride into the mountain. You know, lots of times we're riding moguls for kilometers on end, and I definitely have to take the Skidoo over the moguls. Uh, the players just feel super rigid, and I don't know, maybe it's just the way my suspension's set up. I haven't been able to dial it into where it feels as good as the Skidoo does, so we'll give Skidoo that point for rough trails. Something people always struggle with when they're jumping from a Polaris to a Skidoo is the steering geometry. The Skidoo kind of has maybe an up and down feel like this, whereas the Polaris is just flat because the Polaris has a vertical steering post and the Skidoo has a laid back steering post. I don't think one is better than the other. I think it's just whatever you're used to. Um, at the start of the season, I'd struggle a little bit jumping back to the Polaris if I spent too much time on the Skidoo. But now more towards the end of the season, I can hop back and forth between the two seamlessly and you know do the exact same line, no problem. While we're talking about steering and handlebars, I guess, since we're right here, uh, you can see the bar height on this Polaris is much higher than the Skidoo, but this isn't actually my snowmobile here. This has a two inch riser on it with stock bars, and this is just a low height Polaris bars. The Polaris bars are higher than the factory bars on the Skidoo though. Um, not so much on the free ride with the six inch riser that it comes with, but if you went to the Summit Expert with the 4.7 inch riser, it's much lower than the Polaris bars. The throttle on the players, um, I don't have anything nice to say about it. It's a bad design. There's lots of guys that change it out for that reason. It's constantly jamming up with snow and freezing up. So, so switching to a finger throttle was a huge benefit there. I was much happier riding it right away because it's like you always have cruise control with the stock player's throttle block. There is some aftermarket companies that make uh, throttle blocks. So you don't have to go to a finger throttle if you don't want to but I would definitely recommend switching out that throttle block. Uh, then the brake, I find is much more comfortable on the players and is much stronger. So I definitely prefer the brake on the players over the Skidoo. While we're up talking about this part of the sled, the dash is right here. Um, I mean, I've talked about that enough. I don't have to go into detail. I 
much rather the Polaris dash. But then under the dash is the motor. And I do prefer the E-Tech on the Skidoo over the Polaris. Polaris has a little more top end, but the Skidoo has better throttle response, which I like, especially when you're tree riding. Um, it might burn a little bit dirtier and burn more oil because I've, I've gassed myself out pin and wiggling on the Skidoo a few times where I haven't had that happen with the Polaris. But like I said, the Skidoo runs much smoother, better throttle response, and it always starts first pull. Some people like to complain about the fit and finish on the Polaris versus the Skidoo. Uh, personally, I think the fit and finish on both is really good. People like to say, oh, you push on this and it moves so much. Well, the reason it does that is because there's only two quarter turns holding the entire hood on. So it's really easy to take the hood off in like 20 seconds. Whereas the Skidoo, you have six bolts, which, um, you know, it's definitely more sturdy, but it does take a lot longer to take off. Something else people like to comment on is the weight of the Polaris versus the Skidoo. The Polaris definitely does feel lighter than the Skidoo, but next year, there's only a 10 pound weight difference between the Summit Expert and the RMK. So especially with Skidoo's narrowed up front end, narrow body work, narrower running boards. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty close feel between the two next year, I think. There's not much else to talk about at the front of the sled here. Uh, I mean, I could talk about the skis. I don't prefer one over the other. I think they're both pretty good. Both of them go through ski rubbers, so there's not one that's better than the other there. And also, both of them have blown steering boots, so I thought that was just a Skidoo thing before, but I guess it's uh, every manufacturer. When you don't put your sled in a heated garage overnight once in a while to thaw out, uh, I, there's not much you could do there. That's kind of just bound to happen with enough snow and ice build up. I guess we'll kind of move to the back of the sled here now. We'll talk about the track. I mean, the Skidoo has a 16 inch track, the players has the 15 inch. Uh, I didn't find much difference between the two. I do like the three and a half inch pitch of the Skidoo track, which for next year, I ordered on the players with the two seven five inch. This has a three inch. And then also the three inch on the players doesn't have extrovert drivers and the three inch on the Skidoo has extrovert drivers. So definitely the one up to the Skidoo there. But like I said, ordered the 275 on the Polaris next year, which will come with extroverts, so it should be pretty good. We'll talk about the tunnels a little bit and the running boards. So I prefer the running boards on the Polaris. I find they get a little bit less ice buildup than the Skidoo, especially when it's cold out. Around the back of the running boards on the Skidoo has a tremendous amount of ice buildup where the Polaris doesn't really get much at all. Sometimes it gets a little bit in the top of the tunnel. That's due to the heat exchanger in the Skidoo being on the top of the tunnel at the back, whereas the Polaris is under the gas tank. I do like the design of the Polaris there. Um, I think also the tapered tunnel on the Polaris, I think that makes a huge difference. At first, I just thought, oh, it was a little maybe gimmicky, but uh, the taper definitely makes a difference. I find even once it's trenching, it, it just keeps going. And then the Polaris has tow holds where the Skidoo does not, but you can order them as an accessory for the Skidoo. Now, I thought I liked the tow holds on the Polaris, until I broke one off and almost broke my foot. But luckily they're designed where they're weak enough that they'll actually break under, under stress. So I've had one broken here for a month. I went to replace it, but they're back ordered and I don't really miss it not being there. So I have a toe hold on one side and not on the other. And I don't even notice because I don't use them. And also down below the running boards, we've got our ice scratchers on our rails. I prefer the ice scratchers on the Skidoo, which you could probably put them on a Polaris. The only reason I don't like the Polaris ones is because uh, if you forget to put it up and you back up, you'll, you'll bend them, break them off. Whereas the Skidoo, you can just leave down all the time. It doesn't matter. And I don't find that the Skidoo having less of a scratcher builds more heat. I find they both overheat pretty much at the same time on a hard pack icy trail, which we've had a lot of the last week. Also forgot to mention, I wanted to talk about the tethers on each. It's great to see players come out with a tether this year and it's been pretty good actually, but I do prefer the Skidoo just cause uh, it's the key too, I guess. There's no key on the Skidoo, which I actually can't even get my key out of the ignition on the players. I don't really think there's honestly too much else to talk about. I prefer having shot on the Skidoo obviously but uh, you can buy an electric start, which adds not too much weight if you go with like one of those lithi lithium lightweight batteries. Uh, the Skidoo has a chain case, player's belt drive. Now, I've never had an issue with a chain case. I know some people have, 
but I did blow a quick drive belt this year, which is maybe partly my fault for uh, kind of loading the track up pretty hard and ratcheting it. And I think that's why I blew, but I do like the feel of the quick drive and it drops a little bit of weight. I also like that the Polaris has a bigger gas tank. I think it's 40 liters or 41 and this could use 36 whatever that is in gallons. I think that's pretty much all I have to talk about. I'm probably forgetting some stuff, so if you have any questions, I'll answer it in the comments down below. Feel free to ask there. But this year, the Players is getting the title of top sled, top mountain sled from Muskoka Freerider. Um, I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen next year. We've got the Players 9R and then the Skidoo Gen 5 Summit Expert, no more T-Motion narrower body panels and narrower ski stands. So I think where the Skidoo maybe had a couple shortfalls this year, it's gonna be right there with the players next year. And we'll see who takes it home next year. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you on the next one.